Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity to, to come and speak to you today. Um, I'm very much aware of the excellent work that your organisation has been doing and um, I very much uh, support that work as being critically important for dealing with what is one of the major issues when we, for Ireland when we think about uh, future climate change. What I want to do in the few minutes I have is to talk about changes in Irish rainfall, past, present and future. And I want to attempt in that time to do two things as uh, transparently and as simply as I can. And one is to convey our understanding of how seasonal rainfall, winter and summer in particular, have changed over the past number of hundreds of years. And to think about how daily rainfall extremes like we've seen in Mount Melick and Donegal have changed in observations in the past to this point. So what are the observations telling us? And secondly, how can we expect changes in rainfall, both in winter and summer rainfall, and those extreme rainfall events to unfold in the future because of human-caused climate change? So two apparently simple things. In Ireland, don't worry about these graphs, I'll tell you what they mean in a minute. In Ireland, we have a long uh, history of observation of rainfall. And over the last couple of years, we've been working to try and uh, collate all that, and we've ended up with one of the longest continuous monthly rainfall records in the world that goes all the way back to 1711. This slide shows us the annual rainfall totals every decade going all the way back to 1711. That's the black line is the represents the island of Ireland. These other ones are other long-term rainfall records from across Britain, Ireland, and the Netherlands. What we see when we look at the last 300 years is the most recent 10-year period is the wettest 10-year period in all of that record. When we look at winter, again, just at this top one, this black line is Ireland. Those other colored lines are other long-term records that give us confidence when they're saying the same thing. From about 1790 onwards, there is strong coherence between these, and you see this strong signal of winters getting wetter all the way back from the 1790s to present. Interestingly, the very wettest winter decade we've had is back in 1730. The recent winter uh, closely matches that, but just didn't quite surpass it. When we look at individual years, the winter of 2015-16, the rainfall we got that year is the wettest winter in 305 years at least. When we look to summer, again, just on this top graph, this is towards a, a, a signal or a trend over time over the last 300 years of decreasing summer rainfall. Um, we have seen uh, wetter summers over the last number of years, but the overall trend in, in decadal totals is towards drier summers. So what about the future? When we come to think about the future in all kinds of walks of life, it's hard to make predictions. And it's the same when it comes to climate change. The climate, climate system is complex at a global level. We use models to represent our understanding of how that system works to make projections of how temperature can change, rainfall may change in the future. And it's an uncertain business, particularly when future climate change is dependent on how we as a global society emit greenhouse gases. Uh, how we, our local weather is influenced by natural factors, and all of these things are taken into account. And there's uncertainty here, particularly as we go out to the end of the century. But I want to be transparent with that uncertainty because I think that information is the most important when it comes to decision making about how to adapt to future climate change and flooding. What I want to draw your attention to here are each of these dots on this graph. They are different climate models of the future, uh, for the end of this century, the 2080s or thereabouts, this is the future of our grandchildren and their children. Each dot is a representation of how rainfall may change in winter and how temperatures may change in winter. And our models are saying to us, we see a clear signal of that increasing winter uh, wetness, increasing uh, rainfall in winter into the future, but the magnitude is very uncertain. It can be from small changes up to 25 to 30% wetter. If we're talking about flooding in that context, what does a 30% wetter winters mean? When we look at summer, even the direction of change, whether summers get wetter or drier, is uncertain. Half the models would say wetter, half the models would say drier. And that's important because when we think to 2015-16, it was the wetness of the ground, the antecedent conditions that were so important. And beginning to understand how rainfall in summer is changing is important for thinking about rainfall in winter, and future flooding. Trying to simplify the uncertainty in the science, what we tried to do is think about memorable extremes in the past. You all remember the winter of 2015, 16, and 94, 95, when there was widespread flooding across Ireland. We've used the observations to ask two questions. How has the likelihood or the odds of a winter as wet as 94, 95 
changed. This is the wet winter here. 94, 95 changed over the last 100 years. This was before 2015, 16 happened, but equivalent results for, for that winter. And we've seen a doubling of the risk of a winter as wet as 94, 95 over the last 100 years. When we look to the future, this is winter rainfall. It's that upward trend. And when we look to the future and ask the question, at the end of the century, if we continue with business as usual and greenhouse gas emissions, we expect a winter as wet as that to occur once every eight years on average. Can you imagine 2015, 16 winter kind of conditions once every eight years? So these are real questions we need to think about. In other parts of the extremes, the, warm, the driest and warmest summer we had was in 1995. By the end of the century, we expect a summer as dry as 1995 when there were problems for transport or shipping or navigation and tourism on the Shannon to happen one in every eight years. And our hottest summer was 1995. By the end of the century, we expect on average only one in seven years to be as cool as our warmest year on record. So these are significant changes. They're in average rainfall for winter. If we want to think about the flooding that happened in Mount Melliker in Donegal recently, we need to think about rainfall extremes. And that's a different scientific question, a different challenge. <clears throat> Just from physics, we know that as temperatures of the atmosphere heat up, the atmosphere holds more water, and we expect more intense rainfall to happen. So do we see that physical relationship in the observations? How have they changed in the past? And what do we see from the models about the future? Observations, again, are crucial. Having good quality long-term rainfall records at the correct resolution allows us to have confidence in our findings. So we've been working Med Air with MedAaron to really identify the best available long-term rainfall stations from across the island to have a look at extreme rainfall events. And these are they. And what do they tell us? If we have a look, first of all, about changes in the number of wet days, so our five-day rainfall accumulations. In these graphs, blue is getting wetter, where you see the triangles being bigger, it's a bigger increase, and dry is decreasing, or red is decreasing. We see an increase in five-day rainfall accumulations over the western half of the country. If you divide the Shannon, to the left of that, we are seeing an increase in winter, and we are seeing an increase in five-day rainfall totals on the east coast in summer. If we look at rainfall intensity, we are seeing in winter increasing again, that line, if we imagine dividing the country by the Shannon to the west, increasing trends to the east, decreasing trends in winter rainfall intensity. If we look at the cumulative wet day, continuous wet days over time, the duration of wet events, over time they are increasing, this is for the period 1950 to present, they are increasing across the country. And interestingly, for the people of Leash and Mount Malik, when we look at extremely wet days, these are days when we get in excess of 20 millimeters of rainfall. In, in, we are seeing in summer in particular an increase, and really significant increase, in summer rainfall intensity throughout the east, southeast, and south of the country. That's from observations. When we come to look at changes in rainfall extremes, the best available models to us, we are using them internationally. All I'm going to say is that they are called the Cordex models, but they're the best available to us. And we use as many of them as we can to try and understand those ranges of possible changes in the future. Don't worry about the graphs, we'll look at the text. What it says to us, by the middle and the end of this century, we see a continuation of those changes with significant increases in rainfall intensity into the future. We see the larger proportion of total rainfall that we experience in any season or any year comes from heavy rainfall events. We see those very heavy rainfall days in excess of 20 millimetres a day are likely to increase significantly. These are robust changes across all of these models. We become less certain when we talk about wet spell and dry spell length, but overall rainfall extremes in winter are likely to increase. In summer, the signal is less clear, but we expect increases in rainfall intensity. We do expect that increase in summer heavy rainfall days to continue. And in critically important, in summer we see an increase in dry spell length and a decrease in the wet spell length, or the number of rainfall or dry days consecutively. So what does all of this say to us to conclude somewhat on time for questions and lunch? Historically, from observations, we have seen, or we see a signal of wetter winters and drier summers evident in our long-term observations. And that's consistent across this region of Europe, not just for Ireland. 
these records that we have, an awful lot of time has gone into quality assuring them and making sure the information that we, we draw from the conclusions we make are quality assured and robust. And they show changes in extreme rainfall in the observational records that are consistent with our on physical understanding of how rainfall will change in a warmer world. The future projections of rainfall are inherently uncertain. Rainfall varies from place to place very dramatically. And we, we have uncertainty about the future. But that uncertainty is important information in itself. And that policy around designing of flood defences, of thinking about how to make room for rivers, of thinking about urban pluvial flood risk and coastal flood risk, should all take account of this uncertainty. Not take a single climate model, which is like closing your eyes and throwing a dart at a dartboard, but understanding the ranges of future change. On a seasonal basis, the signal of wetter winters that we see in observations is projected to continue over this century. And recent extremes become considerably more frequent. That idea, again, of winters as wet as our wettest on record to date, happening every eight years by the end of the century. In summer, there are uncertainties where we have even the direction of change in summer is uncertain. That becomes important for understanding flood risk in winter, how wet the ground is, and in terms of water supply on the other end of the spectrum. And finally, remember, and a cautionary note, is that changes in rainfall do not necessarily translate directly into changes in flooding. Catchment characteristics, storage, groundwater, how a catchment processes that rainfall complicates the relationship between rainfall and flooding. And that's where I want to leave it. Thank you for your time.